Hey, what's up turtles? Crick here with Black Owl Outdoors. And what I wanna to do today is take a look at the features and functions of a topo map. So topo is short for topographical, topographical. And what that means is the map is a 2D representation of our three dimensional world, but it has contour lines which shows elevation. And why this is important, and this is a very important skill for you to know if you're gonna be spending any time in the wilderness. But now let's just take a look at the map. I have it spread out on the table right here. And this is a quad map. It's a big map, but it can be folded when you're actually using it in your specific area. Let's take a look at the title now, because that's the first thing we wanna look at on a map. This is Blaine Quadrangle seven and a half minute series topographic map. And the seven and a half minute is the scale, and I'll talk more about that as well. So this just says Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Department of Environmental Resources, Topographic and Geologic Survey. And this is coming from the federal government. If we pan over to the left, which is the Department of the Interior, USGS. And I will leave a link in the description. You can actually buy these topo maps now. They are for sale and it actually has a map locator. So if you're interested in these, check out the description. Now we're gonna move down to the bottom of the map and look at the scale. This is the graphic scale. And it doesn't matter what type of map you're using, when you look at a map for the first time, you wanna find the scale and the north arrow, but we're looking at the scale down here. And this says one to 24,000. And what that means is one inch on this map will equal 24,000 inches in real life, which is like 2,000 feet. So if we look at this graphic scale, my finger's at zero, and I move over, it says one mile. And that's about two and five eighths inches, I believe, if my memory's serving me correctly. So one inch here is 2,000 feet, two inches, 4,000, 5,280 feet in a mile. It makes sense. So scale is always important. And I chose this one to 24,000 scale because there's a lot of detail expressed on the map. Moving right below that, we can see our contour interval. And what that tells us is the feet or distance between our contour lines. And we will look at that specifically and I'll show you how to read contour lines. Moving over to the right now, we can see a little bit of a legend. And really all this one is showing us are the roads and how they're classified. So we have this red and white dashed line, medium duty, showing a light duty road, state route, which is a circle, and then unimproved dirt road, which potentially might be four by four as well. And then continue moving on, we'll take a look at the north arrow, and this is actually telling us our declination. Now this map doesn't have just a really bold north arrow, but just from experience, I know this sign, or this line, excuse me, with the star on the top, that's what's showing us our north arrow. And what declination is, is important, it's very important. But basically what it is, is the angle difference between true north and magnetic north, because the magnetic poles are not where the North Pole is on the Earth, there's an angle difference, and that changes over time. It's very, very specific to your area. So this is an old map, and it's telling me eight degrees, right? But I know that's incorrect, because the last time this updated was probably 1984. So you have to know that your current declination, where you're going to be traveling, hiking, camping, anything like that. Now, and declination is a very important topic, and I've covered it in a video on its own, so I'm not gonna go into any more detail in this video about magnetic declination. I chose this map for a few reasons, and one of them is being the units, the maps and using the measurements. And this is UTM, standing for Universal Trans Mercator, I believe, as opposed to lat long, latitude, longitude, which is the other popular one. Up in this corner of the map, I have a small grid drawn out. And you could do it over the whole entire map. But what I've done is essentially connected the UTM tick marks from each side, running the whole way over here and starting the whole way going down. And what I've done is created these thousand meter by thousand meter squares. And for all of you who said math isn't important, when are you ever going to use it? What I've done is just created an XY axis. This is algebra. This is all this is. And I know the value. So for example, if I had a, a dot on the map right here, I can find the UTM just by knowing this line. When my, point, when my pencil's pointing out this UTM right here, this is its number. And there's an implied, there's three digits missing. What this number really is, is 4,470,000. There's three decimal places 
it's implied that this is the value. So if we trace this line over here, you know, this is our axis here, and we come up, then I know this is 286,000. I can infer just by eyeballing it, or there are actual UTM grid readers that you would place on top of this, and it'll give you in its thousands what this value is, then you're gonna be adding the specific one. And again, I'm not gonna go into any more detail about how to use, how to read UTMs, but if it's desired, I will do its own specific video. But I chose UTMs because that's what I was trained on with the Forest Service, and that's what I'm most comfortable with using. All right, let's jump back to contour lines, take a look at the map, and I wanna show you how you would read the terrain. So little knob. It's a nice thing about quad maps is that landscape features are named. And I can see this is a peak. There's an X saying the elevation of this 1,594 feet above sea level. And I know this is a mountain. This is an elevation high point. On topo maps, if you're in the west where there's craters, it's going to look the exact same because you're either going up or down, but where this is elevation high point, say it's a crater, there'll be an X. Now this X is marking the elevation, but there'll be a more distinct X showing this is a depression. But if we jump over here and look at this 1300 line, it's bolded. Now if I count up 1320, 1340, 60, 80, next bowl line is 1400 feet. And the shape of this is all showing the terrain. Right here is probably a little drainage probably an ephemeral drainage. If we take a look right here at the top of this mountain, look how much darker these lines are compared to just right here. And what that's telling me is that this is very steep. When the contour lines are this close to each other or as close as they can be shown on a map, that's telling you it's very, very steep terrain. So from right here to this contour line, if we work our way up this mountain, you know it's gonna be a steep climb. And as we work our way down, down. Look how much more spread out these lines are. That indicates this is a flat land. This is probably a valley. Well, I know it is, but the wider the contour lines are spread apart, the more flat the area is. And this is white. This is signifying private land. All the green on this map means it's public land. And this is the Tuscarora, Tuscarora, excuse me, Tuscarora State Forest. I know that because right down here, as you can see, it's saying Tuscarora State Forest. This video was to really just start, I guess, showing you some of the features, some of the language specific to detailed topographic maps. Now we've done videos that are relevant to this, how to use a map with a compass and magnetic declination. So if you wanna learn more, watch those videos. And if you still have more questions, come back and let us know in the comment section below. Just to reiterate what I said in the beginning of this video, I think map reading is a very important and critical skill for anyone who wants to spend time outdoors. Whether you're going for a day hike, a week long backpacking trip, canoeing, whatever. If you're going on that trip, there's probably one person who's gonna take control of the map and GPS. But it's still important that everyone in the group knows where you're going and has a general basic understanding of how to look at a map and also know where you are on the map because a map's not any use unless you know where you are on the map. Now, I can nerd out about maps any time of the day, any day of the week. So I try to keep this one, this video cursory. As I said before, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. As always, thank you for your support. Thanks for your encouragement. Thanks for your constructive criticisms. Thanks for your thumbs up. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for your emails. Thanks for your likes. Thanks to our patrons on Patreon. Really, really, really appreciate all your support. Everyone, guys and gals, turtles. Till the next video, this is Crick and Stoney with Black Owl. Peace out, turtles.